Hey, welcome back to this evening's edition of DXB Today, where we are looking into the role of emeritization in all of our lives at the moment, be that at work, at play, or of course elsewhere. Uh, our next guest this evening is a senior vice president uh, leading effective and innovative hiring solutions for local talents across the region through the latest outsourcing tools. Please welcome to the show uh, Pedro Lacerda from Task Group, who is joining us here live on DXP today. Pedro, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot for the for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Really appreciate your time. And, and let's talk. Let's talk Task. I'm going to take you to Task on Task first and foremost, if I may. Um, explain if you can, for those that don't know, what TASK is, what ta ta TASK does, and then add into that your emeritization initiatives and what you're looking to achieve. Thanks for the question. We are a specialized HR recruitment company uh, with a global presence, but of course with the main focus being in GCC. We employ close to 7,000 associates for more than 500 clients from different kinds of organizations, mm. government, SMEs, multinationals, Forbes 500, global level startups. It's a company with 17 years of existence, but with a tremendous growth traject trajectory. But more than that, it's now the role that we have influencing also emiratization in the mm. country. That's clearly one of our key pillars of our strategy and that's the reason also why we are so proud about what we are doing in this country. What about the training programs then? Because I know you run a lot of those as well to, as we say, get the right national into the right position. So tell us a little bit more about those. We do uh, more than 200 recruitments of Emiratis per year. So, and it's, recruitment is one part of the process. Mm. Of course, we need to work side by side with our clients, wherever they are government clients, wherever they are private companies, not only to recruit, to onboard them, but also to work to make them stay in the company Which and then make a career progression. Mm. And this is, people talk a lot in this, in this country about how complex it is to retain Emiratis. Huh? I worked, this is the, seventh, uh, the sixth country where I'm living. I worked in more than 20 geographies. I face this challenge everywhere in the world. The labor market becomes globalized. And of course, retention is a key topic, not only yeah. in UAE, but at a global level. Of course, here, knowing that the Emirati nationals are 10% of the, world, the country population, it creates a higher complexity, what I call positive complexity. Yeah. because it brings lots of good challenges into the country. Yeah. I'm fascinated by your book, Tom. <laughs> well, I don't think it's your book, is it? Keep talking, it's I'm Pedro, reading. It's Pedro's <laughs> it's book. Uh, Pedro, tell us about the, the literal guidebook that uh, Mr. Urquhart's reading. This is one of the contributions uh, that I was talking in the beginning, uh, that it's the second emiratization guide that we are launching. So the first one was last year, this year, um, we, we launched our second one in, com in, uh, in conjunction with MORE. So for us, it's very important that the Ministry of Human Resources and Emiratization uh, is really giving us full support. Mm. And basically, it's more than a guidebook. It's a document that everyone can access really to reflect what's the stage of the country from a candidate perspective, from an employee perspective, from an employer perspective related to emiratization, but also it helps companies, job seekers, uh, workers to make decisions. Mm -hmm. And you have lots of data comparing year on year, you have lots of trends, how uh, the emiratization is moving in the country. If I take a single solution on this guide, clearly it gives me a direction that emiratization is a success in the country, combined with the UAE plan of 2031, and is clearly now a key pillar for several private companies where we are one, or at least we try, I say this very humble, to be one of the influencers on, of the country, together with government, to make it happen. Pedro, so I have a question, right? I was honored to be one of the panelists in uh, I remember. last year's task uh, emeritization. We were very proud of it. Event. Thank you very much. I tried my best. I tried my best to hold my tongue. 
<laughs> and not to speak out my mind, but it was, it was, it was a great conversation because um, there are a lot of challenges when we talk about emeritization. And when I saw the statistics and the data that you provide and you share, I thought it's a great argument. It's, it's, it's right there. Facts speak for itself. Mm. And normally as a panelist, I have to make an argument when I speak to companies. But this, you have these statistics, you have these numbers. My question to you, what is TASC doing beyond, beyond this, this, this book? How are you using it to make the argument to all these global, global companies, international companies that you speak with to really embrace nationalization? And, and beyond the quotas, we talked about quotas, and beyond the quotas, how are you using this? And what is the response from companies? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question, uh, in line with what we saw uh, in our event last year. Uh, let me tell you the following. You are fully right, numbers don't lie. Uh, we did this survey this year with 610 companies, 4,969 uh, between job seekers and employees who are all Emiratis working. Mm. What we see clearly is a trend where Emiratization is now becoming a natural way of living and acting in the labor market. Because it was perceived that something's a bit strange, a bit out of scope. I see it really as one of the key pillars of competitiveness of this country in a global market. That, that's my, my first point. The, 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 sec the second note I, uh, I would like to share uh, also with you related to this is there is a gap between private sector and government sector. And this gap needs to continue to be worked uh, between both parts. I think the government has a, a tremendous importance, but companies like us, in the way we provide recruitment and the way we bring innovation into the market, uh, helps a lot. What I want to, to mention you as a clear example, we were the first company, and please don't take it as sponsorship because it's, it's public, to launch uh, a app, uh, I hope I will say it correctly in Arabic, yes. Falak Taib. So Falak Taib. Falak Taib, yes, Falak Taib. almost there. Yes. Falak Taib, I say it again. Uh, which is the first app uh, in the GCC market exclusive for Emiratis and exclusive where you take, it's a marketplace where you can apply for a job. It's a marketplace totally for free where companies can place their job hats. You can get trainings, you can get consultancy, you can learn how to do career progression, you can learn how to do your CV. The only characteristic you need to have is you need to be an Emirati with your uh, job family, with your job tree, and that will allow you to be part of the HEP. So I think um, actions like this brings value to the country, brings value for the competitiveness I was uh, talking to you, and add also to the data and to the yearly studies that we are contributing for, this is not for us, this is for the market and for the society itself. Right. Public sector, private sector, job seekers, employees, everyone. Mm. Because that's the value. Any of us, if we start to, to look at our guide, we will learn from it. Mm. And that's the added value we try to give. Thank you so much, Fabio, for joining us on the show and telling us more about what TASC is doing with the amortization programs and in the country. But now, Katie, I think it's time for DXB in 60. <laughs> DXB in 60 time. That means I pull out a piece of paper from behind the cushion. Um, Talib, do you know what we're going to do now? I'm going to ask you quick fire questions, 60 seconds. Answer as many questions as possible, but they're all about you. Oh, wow. So hopefully you will get them right. Are you ready? I was born prepared. Born prepared. I wasn't, I wasn't told scout? about this No, segment, you weren't told about it. That's why I pulled it from behind the I'm cushion. Prepared, yes. We're going to have 60 seconds on the clock and we're going to start in three, two, one. Let's go. If you weren't an entrepreneur, what would you be doing? I would have been a teacher. Oh, nice. That makes perfect sense. What was your first job? A magician. A performing magician on stage selling <laughs> raffle tickets. Hang on, stop the clock. We're not allowed to stop the clock. We'll talk about that later. Fine. What is your motto in life and in work? Authenticity. Talk the talk, walk the walk. Oh, nice. What's the best business advice you've ever been given? Listen to the market. Oh, nice. Do you have a go-to place in Dubai? 
that we should know about? <sighs> I'd rather keep it a secret. I'm an introvert, but it's a nice coffee shop. And uh, I just take my book in there. I'm not going to mention it. Literally yeah. keeping it a secret. OK, uh, a podcast recommendation? My podcast, to be honest, podcast with Talib Hashim. That's perfect. OK, the most used app on your phone? X, unfortunately. OK, no, we like it. Last question. Why Dubai? Because Dubai is fruit salad. Fruit salad, you have all the mixes of culture, but it has, it still keeps its unique flavor. Yeah. That's one of the best answers we've ever had. That's done, well done, we're all done on our uh, DXB in 60. Almost done. Uh, just to say thank you, it's got to say a big thank you to you, Talib. Always good to catch up with you. Thanks very Thanks. much indeed for your input Always a pleasure. This thank you for having me. Uh, so thank you very much indeed. Then Brigado to Pedro as well. Thank very you well so said. Indeed. Thank you, right? <laughs> thank you, Tom. Great to have you with <laughs> us here as well. Thank you. Um, uh, we aren't going anywhere. They might be uh, changing business cards and all, but we are sticking around by because we've got Anissa playing us out very shortly.